Hello guys and welcome to another MK Mobile video. Guys, today we're talking about this. It is the Linkway Tower and we have some pretty great equipment out of it. So, before I get into the equipment, I will give you some background. The Linkway Tower, guys, was the second tower we got after the Tower of Horror. The Tower of Horror was pretty generous in terms of drop rates, so you're getting a lot of diamonds. Uh, Actually, you are getting you are getting just one diamond, but you are getting a lot of epics along the way. It was on average two or three pieces uh, in a run, and this tower was very, very, very easy. So the challenge wasn't there. And then what they did is they introduced the Linkway Tower, which was incredibly difficult. It was bloody difficult. Even if you had maxed out diamonds, you'd be struggling there. And they introduced this um, tower, and then we had just one scepter that we could get for, uh, for free at Battle 200, but getting to Battle 200 was really, really bad. And on top of that, this tower was stingy, the drop rate was horrible, people were starting to call it LKT, or the Less Cool Tower, or LKT the Le Coins Tower, and so on and so on, because everything this tower was dropping was coins. So this tower set the stage for every single tower after it, and this is why it is kind of notorious. I don't like it. Anyways, uh, now let's focus on the equipment that you can get. I have some of it maxed out, some of it on Fusion 1 or 2, but let's take a look at the three pieces that they're currently showing to us. The Frost Axe, 80% basic attack damage boost against enemy suffering by Frostbite, that's pretty insane. I need to test whether it's working by the way, because I've been using this item a lot and I don't think it actually works, or at least doesn't work with 80% efficiency, let's see. And then, only for Sub-Zero, 50% chance to apply Frostbite on enemy on special attack 1, that's awesome. 50% uh, unblockable chance on basic attacks, you always need that. And the damage boost in Inquay Tower. However, the item that you have in the middle is incredible, the Frost Mask, look at this, 55% max health boost. After defeating an opponent, apply Frostbite on their teammates, for the entire team, for 15 seconds, that's, wow, that's really great, if you have this I mean, if you have this on Sub-Zero, it's game over. And then Sub-Zero has top 100% chance to apply Frostbite on enemy team at the start of the match. So you're applying Frostbite on the enemy team, the entire team. In the beginning of the match, you kill a guy and then you, <laughs> and then you repeat the process. So the entire enemy team is Frostbitten for the entire duration of the match. That's insane. Then 50% opponent unblockable attack change reduction. Now, I'm curious, does that apply to the basic attacks? Because if it does, then it means that you are immune to block break like you just can block and you can get away with it and that's incredible that's really really incredible unfortunately I don't have this item maxed out so I cannot really test it but you have this thing and the talent that reduces the enemy unblockable attack even at level one then you're good to go so the frost mask is really one of the best items in the game and then we have the frost orb this is uh, the the item that Jade loves, because it reduces the power cost of all special attacks. That's okay, 15%, not great, not terrible. One spare fight, spawn an ice clone that will save the user from a knockout blow. So it works like MK level sub zero passive. There is 50% chance the ice clone will explode and apply frostbite to the opponent. Another thing. I mean, it's okay, but I will take just a revival. And then you are immune to frostbite and stun. So this item is incredible for Jade, of course, if it's maxed out. Immunity to frostbite and stun. And of course, the Frost Orb kind of, uh, kind of, uh, kind of counters the Frost Mask. <laughs> Anyways, let's proceed. Uh, the thing is, guys, these epic equipments, they're gorgeous, they're great, but let's face it. In case you are not willing to spend a lot of money, probably you can max something like this. Probably you can max it for... Two or three years. Two years if you're lucky, because if they keep on repeating a tower once a year, and the thing is, once they repeat it, uh, the duration of the tower is shorter. I I heard that this tower is going to stay for about three weeks. For three weeks, even if you do three runs, that's three random epics. I believe now it gives you random epic. It doesn't give you the scepter. Let's see. I didn't pay attention to this. What do we get at Battle 200? What does it say? Come on, come on. Load it. Load it already discover unique equipment it doesn't say so i don't know whether it's going to the scepter because in the past we were getting the scepter guaranteed so you can max it out if you do 11 runs of the tower but now to discover unique equipment and earn a random diamond sub zero okay sub zero is the same but unique equipment does it mean that it's going to be the scepter or a random it doesn't matter even if it is the scepter then you have to do this tower four times per three attempts so that's four years i mean guys <laughs> it's really difficult to wax it out so when it comes to the epics 
There are certain equipment that are very great at Fusion Zero, and these are the best epics in my opinion. But uh, without any further ado, let's go to the epics of, uh, not to the epics, but O Tower equipment of the Lin Kuei Tower. It should be somewhere here. Okay, let's start with the Cory Blade. On Fusion Zero, it is still useful because it's boosting your attack by 15%, and that is always good. And 50% chance to apply Ice Armor after defeating an opponent. Pretty great, you can equip this, for example, on MK11 Scorpion, and there is a very good chance that you'll be immune to... Not immune, but you're going to take very, very low damage from an incoming special attack. And of course, at Fusion 10, look at this. Every time an owner defeats an opponent, each surviving opponent gets one uh, bar of their power drained. Pretty gorgeous. So, this item maxed out on your main damage deal on your main fighter means GG, but it has to be maxed out. Now the Scepter. The Scepter is pretty good, but it depends on the level as well, and that's unfortunate. Uh, I have it at Fusion 5, and Fusion 5 gives 75% little more chance and a part of starting power. To be honest, these uh, things that you unlock at Fusion 10, it's not really that great. Look at this. 100% chance to apply Bleed when hitting an opponent affected by Freeze. I mean, it's useful, but it's nothing nothing special, though the little blow chance, which uh, will increase up to 100% at Fusion 10 and 1.5 bars of starting power can make all the difference in the game. So Kwai Liang's Scepter are very good with the Weather Warfare, it is simply unfair. Uh, Cryomancer Armor, I don't have this max style, but it's very very useful, especially in the beginning when uh, you don't want to get uh, destroyed by Circle Shadow Wukane. You just have this item. You can get snared though, but you won't get killed, at least. Uh, if, even if he has X-Ray, the shield will absorb it. Absorb it. Sorry about that. Uh, Kuai Liang Bracers, nothing special. This is some common piece and you need it uh, in order to... Uh, you need it in order to do the Brutality of Zero, though it gives you a 20% chance to apply Freeze when an opponent blocks basic attack, which basically means that you want them to block but at the same time you don't want them to block so you can do brutality so it really doesn't make sense but they decided to do it like this so what i can say uh, ice gloves this is not really the great thing uh chance to apply strength on the opponent after freezing an opponent it's okay but not really the greatest thing and 50 percent opponent critical hit chance reduction good i mean this item is good but there are simply better alternatives now uh, we go to the Frost Orb, I have it at Fusion 1, and I reckon that at Fusion 1 this piece is very very useful. So uh, yeah, Fusion 1, still good, one of the best uh, epics in the game. So if you happen to get it, you are a lucky guy. And the Frozen Mummy, 100% resistance to Frostbite, and 15% reduced power cost of all special attacks. This is very useful in the tower, but outside of the tower, Frostbite is very situational, not a lot of characters do Frostbite, so... If it was turn, it would be very, very much, much better. And the Frost Axe, we already talked about it, and the Ice Bomb. Now, I'm going to touch on this thing, guys. Ice Bomb is probably the best common piece from any tower, in my opinion, because it gives you power generation. Everybody requires power generation, right? But the important thing is that it gives you a 100% chance to apply Freeze on the active enemy at the start of the game. This is so good. You can counter Circle of Shadow Kane. If you have, for example, a uh, Scepter on another Sub-Zero, you can just freeze the guy using the Ice Bomb and then destroy him using Sub-Zero Scepter because it will uh, deal a lot of damage. In general, this item is one of the best equipment uh, to be given to a starter. In my eyes, probably the best. If you have this item maxed out, you're basically good to go. You're safe. Uh, I had only one or two cases when I was using this to counter Circle of Shadow um, Lucane, and in those two cases he resisted the freeze. Only two cases out of, I don't know, hundreds probably. So it is very, it, it is almost, there is no chance of this happening, like at all. Very, very small chance that uh, whoever you are facing in the beginning of the game is going to resist the freeze. They can resist the stun, yeah. They can resist the fire, they can resist uh, the bleed, but they will most probably won't resist the freeze. And that's very, very important, guys. So what can I possibly do? Uh, let me do a quick test. I will go to battle mode and I will test. I will test whether this item works, as I explained to you. But I'm going to test it on a very weak character. Let's see. Let's see. Okay, I'm going to pick uh, Jason. Uh, it really doesn't matter. Now, I want to check whether if uh, the enemy is Frostbitten, Jason will be doing more damage. So what I will do 
is oh I'll give him uh, the weather warfare and I will give him this thing all right and he's Netherlands so he won't be affected by uh, other two guys in the team that's beautiful now we are oh my god they're so weak I need I need stronger opponents let's see here can I do it oops not cancel not cancel confirm thank you okay it's level six fusion six fine now what I will do is I will hit them while they're not frostbitten and uh, you see the damage. And then I'll be hitting them with basic attacks once they're frostbitten and they are going to compare the damage. I hope that 80% means that I'll, we should be doing double the damage uh, once they're frostbitten with basic attacks. Let's see. Okay. Okay. 2287. Okay. 2287-3430. Two, two, eight, okay. So I should be doing something like uh, 4 and 7 on my basic attacks after and 10 after they're frostbitten. Okay, let's see. I am not convinced that this thing works, guys. Look at this. The damage is higher, but it's not 80%. Hmm. I am not convinced that this is 80%. Look at this. Four. Six. No, this isn't 80% at all. So this thing doesn't work. And that's really unfortunate, but I think that's yet, yet again another bug. And it's a very good way to... Uh, it's, a, it's a very good that actually this happens now during the tower, so we can eventually report it and hopefully they'll fix it. Because you saw it, I was doing 2.4 uh, and then I was doing like 3. Point something. I'm going to do the calculations after the end of the video while I'm editing because I cannot really hold the numbers in my head. But uh, I'm convinced that it's not 80% and that's unfortunate. You'll be seeing the correct numbers somewhere in the screen right about now. Okay guys, this is going to be all for me for today. See you next time. Take care and stay safe. Perfect.